weekly sit down with local agricultural leaders and businesses. This is Tailgate Conversations. Sponsored by Pinnegar Chevrolet. There is no doubt none of us can imagine a world without electricity. Today we're going to talk about how rural America was electrified and the cooperatives that are leading us into the future. President Roosevelt, mm -hmm. he liked to vacation in rural America uh, at lakes and so forth and he was at a place where uh, there wasn't a lot of electricity and he said, you know, I think I can do something about this. So uh, he took the model of the cooperative and introduced it to rural farmers, mm -hmm. uh, rural folks that were out on the prairies and, and in the Midwest Missouri, uh, for example. Um, and so then you had uh, bands of farmers getting together. Uh, the membership was five dollars at the time um, and then they would build to you progressively. Uh, there were stipulations you had to have so many uh, head of cattle on your farm and uh, pretty soon you know farmers they're the smartest people on the planet Absolutely. In, in my opinion <laughs> uh, they decided well uh, said farmer only had 15 they needed to have 20 uh, so they would round up five cattle from a neighbor uh -huh. show the 20 cattle and they just would leapfrog through the area showing uh, the officials we had that so that they could get uh, rural electric into the farms and, and help America grow. So Patrick, let's think about how these rural electrics were divided up across the state of Missouri and kind of Ozark Electric Cooperative's territory. Okay, um, it was a regional, you know, kind of mm -hmm. first in, uh, kind of divided the territory. Ozark Electric actually was one of the largest cooperatives in southwest Missouri. Um, we got to where uh, there was more and more meter density and customers mm -hmm. and members that were uh, on our system so uh, we started to go and, and talk to other places uh, south of us and southwest of us and said hey uh, we've got this going now uh, it's past our scope to be able to provide uh, responsive restoration for outages let's uh -huh. say uh, because everything is if it's housed here in Mount Vernon uh, how do we go south of Cassville and do that in a timely fashion right. And so uh, it was based out of meeting the members' needs for responding to outages or constructing the line. So it started, we got a group of farmers that would be in a region. Um, you know, the directors that are elected by our membership, our members also, they help govern our board and direct the steps and activities. They have a of, voice. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so when they make a decision in our boardroom, uh, that same decision they're going to have to bear the weight for because that's affecting how their membership is treated as well. So, you know, it spread that way and as, as soon as they got wind throughout the state of Missouri that this program was available um, and how the, the, the process worked, um, man, it was just something that spread like wildfire. Yeah. As soon as you could get something built, uh, it was it was expanding to the next farm. <laughs> the, the cliche term, build it and they will come, and that's exactly it's, how this that, was that is built. exactly it's how, how rural Missouri was electrified. So, you know, Ozark Electric is just one example of the many rural electric cooperatives across the state of Missouri, but let's talk about your specific demographics. How many people are you serving? What counties? And, you know, how has that transitioned from the 30s into servicing them today? Okay. Big uh, question. The, the big thing is the advancement in technology, the advancement in the equipment. Uh, before, guys would take, oh gosh, they were digging holes by hand, they were dragging poles and equipment in by a team of mules. Now we have incredible equipment that helps to make yeah. that happen a lot faster. Uh, Ozark Electric uh, proper is nine counties. It's Lawrence County as the center, and mm -hmm. then the, the, the eight counties that surround it. Let's see, we've got 35,000 meters and uh, members that, that, that we need to take care of. Well, I'll, you know, Lawrence County was my home growing up and I still call it home. And so I remember growing up and, you know, when the power would go off, you get on the phone and we would wait in line to get a hold of you and say, hey, we're out of power, whether it was a mass outage or just a small in particular. Now, you were telling me earlier that you know that we're out of power basically before um, we even get a hold of you. So that's an example of response time and technology, right? Right, right. We've gone so far 
uh, from the dial meters to the digital meters now that, that give us information uh, as far as location, outage, service av availability. It tells us uh, voltage at the meter, uh, whether or not we've got the adequate voltage that we need to uh, to help the members with their electricians if they're trying to track down something. So just the, the technology and the advancement has just been unbelievable. So Patrick, we've talked a lot about the history of electrifying rural America, but let's talk about the future. And one of those uh, hot topic uh, conversation is uh, vehicles and, and electric cars. Um, where do they fit into uh, Ozark Electric and, and what the cooperatives do? We've heard from the automakers that the electric car mm -hmm. is here. It's here to stay. One of the things that we have to prepare for and that we do studies for uh, is to make sure that our system is adequate for uh, what's what's a saturation point for these cars to start showing up in rural America and mm -hmm. plugging in at night? Um, we already are on Facebook actively engaging our members that if they're considering to do that, uh, please contact our engineering department mm -hmm. um, so that we can come out and do an assessment and see that your service that's on your farm uh, is able to handle the load of plugging in one of these vehicles. Mm -hmm. Well, when it comes to energy, um, you we think of uh, options, and, and options are what right. your your members have. So one of those options is solar. Right. So right. how does that fit into the future? We have seven solar farms oh, uh, that wow. generate uh, throughout Northeast uh, Missouri, Kansas, and, and parts of Oklahoma that you know provide generation for renewables. We have hydro. So 20% of our generation and consumption makeup is from renewable technology. Another conversation that is taking place in all circles, getting broadband into our rural areas and the driving force of that conversation, whether you're here in rural Missouri or on the east or west coast, is, is farming and agriculture. So when it comes to the potential for that, um, where does Ozark Electric, where does uh, the cooperatives come into those conversations? Oh man, it is, it's, it's in the center of our discussions. Uh, our boardroom is frequently talking about it. We're pulling for it to get into rural America. What we won't do is be hasty in doing that. We're gonna make a metered decision uh, that makes sure that is not going to be subsidized by the electric side of what we do. If we're to endeavor to do broadband or fiber to the home project, we wanna make sure that there's gonna be enough take rate from our members using the service uh, for it to stand on its own and to be able to make it. Um, we're actually going to be uh, embarking on having a, a consulting firm come and do a feasibility study of our entire system and let us know, okay, what would it be like? Mm -hmm. Is there a business model that, that makes sense uh, for us to go out and try to endeavor to get into the rural recesses uh, with fiber to the home? I'm very cautious to make sure that I don't project the beliefs or the demographics or the, the metrics that make decisions at Ozark Electric onto my counterparts, onto my colleagues. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got all the information, all the data they need to make their decision. Um, and so we'll be doing that uh, to assure our members that not only have we looked at it ourselves internally and we've stayed away from it, um, we're going to go and, and make sure that we have somebody that comes in that does this. It's, it's a national uh, consulting firm that does this um, so that we've got real experts that are taking a look at it to help inform us on what we do in the future. Well, it's uh, it's not cliche to say that the future is bright when it comes <laughs> to, <laughs> to <one>. electrifying <laughs> rural Missouri because it, uh, when it, we go back to the 1930s and we began with electricity, you guys have moved forward to so many other options for your members. Where is the best place for your your members to come and learn more about you. You have so many options today, whether it's the magazine or online or social media. So kind of direct them to where they can stay up on all these options for them. Hey, they can walk into one of our offices. <laughs> um, they can call up. Um, they can visit the website, obviously. Uh, Rural Missouri is one. Uh, a new feature that we offered this last year, uh, we did regional meetings. And that was just to give our members more access to us because that's, that's the big thing is communication from our membership, either through their elected director mm -hmm. or into our staff or to myself personally um, so that we know that we're not making uh, decisions in a vacuum that aren't addressing their needs.